I want you to think about your great impossibility. See, you're looking at your situation. You're saying, well, we're separated. It's impossible. Uh, listen, papers have been filed. We're just a week away. It's impossible. Listen, he's sleeping in the basement. I'm on the top floor. We haven't been in the same bed in a year, year and a half. It's impossible. Every time we try to have a conversation with us, it goes from zero to a hundred real quick. We're fussing, fighting, cursing, screaming, yelling, spitting. It's impossible. You're looking at your friends and those around you in their miserable situations. And you're talking about how how it's impossible you go to advice to counselors to therapists and to pastors and they, they will tell, tell you, you to leave your marriage they will tell you it's, impossible. it's impossible but listen folks stop looking at your circumstances because the facts don't matter once we truly got an understanding that the facts were irrelevant that our current situation is irrelevant, irrelevant it means nothing, nothing. You're living from the outside in rather than living from the inside out. Now, when I close my mind or close my mind, when I close my eyes, I am now tapping into the spiritual realm. Why? Because the kingdom of God lives within me. All of the possibilities and probabilities in my life, in my marriage happens when I shut down my senses and tap into the kingdom with, with, which, which is within me because God lives within me. And if God is a power and a force that is created this earth within six days rested on the seven and everything that is great comes from him and he has a plan for my future why can't I come into alignment with that and have a plan for my marriage that's better and different than what I have right now I got to get my ideal image of a marriage from him and then I've got to model it based upon what he is establishing his word and I need to remain consistent regardless of how my spouse shows up so when she doesn't respond I still got to be consistent when she she says, I'm done. I still got to be consistent when she spits and cur I'm just paraphrasing. You know, I'm just saying that metaphorically, whatever she does, it does not matter because I've got to be firm in my word. If God said it, I believe it. If he said it, I'm going to do it. Now, God is not a liar. He's not a liar. The minute I quit, the minute I step back and say it can't be done, well, guess what? I've come into agreement with the fact that it won't be done and it won't. And I can't blame God. I can't blame circumstances. I can't blame my spouse. I got to blame me because I wasn't willing to do whatever it took to get what it is that I said that I want. The question is, what do you really want? Are you going to be a sucker? Are you going to be a spiritual sissy? Are you going to look at your circumstances and shrink? Are you going to reduce your dreams down to your present reality? Or are you going to look beyond today and see the possibility? That means I got to hold on to any example I have, every model I have, every book, every wise word that I can have. And I got to become soaked and saturated in it until I become a believer. Let me just read the scripture because I think this is relevant. Woo. Isaiah 26, 3 says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captain, uh, captive to obey Christ. Now look at that. The knowledge of the God. Knowledge. The knowledge of God. Now I'm not talking about reading the word because you have a relationship with God. He speaks something into your spirit. He tells you what to do. That's the knowledge of God. But then you look at circumstances, you talk to the wrong people, and then you begin to form opinions within your mind and you begin to start telling yourself stories, right? That will rule you out, that will cancel you out. You don't become a believer and you, what do you do? You pervert what God has spoken to you. So you gotta cast down every negative thought, every negative emotion, every negative opinion, you got to cast away everybody who doesn't support the vision and the goal that you have to get your marriage back in track. That's why you got to be careful who you listen to. Stop listening to the wrong people. Stop sharing your problems with people who share your problems. You got to go to people who have what you want and have been where you are. And if you have nobody else around you, hold on to the word of God. Marinate in it. Pray in it. Talk about it. Because the more you speak it, the more you hear it. And the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing. So sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. David, when he was going to battle, the Bible even says he had to encourage himself. That's what you've got to do.